If you're hurt, injured, don't waste time. Gary Johnson drives for every dime. Welcome to Simply the Law, a program created by attorney Gary C. Johnson. Simply the Law provides free legal advice and encourages happiness and quality of life. Now, here's Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson. Hello, everyone. Welcome into Simply the Law. I'm Keith Casebolt. My, how week flies by. Hello to my dear friend, Gary C. Good Johnson. Good to be back. Hey, guys, how'd you do? None of you, not a single one of you did any criticism, right? And those that were criticized, they just went right off of Right? Took it as a compliment. Yeah. You said, oh, goody, I'm important. They criticized me. Ha, ha, ha. How you guys doing, gals? You aren't criticizing, condemning, and complaining, right? You're being impeccable with the word. You're not assuming anything. Right? No imaginary slots. You're doing the best you can do without worrying about the best someone else can do. Right? And you aren't taking anything personal. Gary, I, isn't it amazing how those four little agreements can take away all of the anguish in your life if you could only keep if you those, could just do it the four agreements <laughs> that's the hard part you may know the rules <clears throat> the doing it's the hard part okay i started the last week with a cup a thing from proverbs <laughs> so this week i'm going to give you another one because it's my favorite th thing in in the bible is Proverbs because it's got so much wisdom in it. <clears throat> Be not among wine guzzlers, nor among gluttonous eaters of food. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and laziness shall clothe a man with rags. Proverbs 23:20 20 to 21. Wow. Hmm? That was a tough one. <laughs> and here's what. <laughs> W.C. Fields had to say about the Bible. <clears throat> he said, I've spent a lot of time searching through the Bible for any type of loophole. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I was looking for a way out. But it says what it says and means what it means. Yeah, surely there's a loophole in there somewhere. W.C. Fields would say that. <clears throat> <laughs> Let's go, computer. I'm going to get through it, and then I'm going to talk to you about some stuff that you might find it interesting, okay? The law is never interesting. 800 was our number. We are in Lexington, and while I'm thinking about Lexington, this will play before the election. Be absolutely certain, my friends, that you vote yes on the amendment that says that the term limits for your district judges and your circuit clerks are increased to eight years. I think it's important for taxpayers that we don't have to go through all those elections every four years. It is a good amendment. I strongly recommend it. There's nothing in it for me, but I think it's an amendment that needs to pass. Okay? GaryCJohnson.com. In general, make sure, my friends, you have under insurance, and I've done this on probably 500 programs over the years. Make sure you have under insurance that protects you and your family. Okay, let's take a break and we'll come right back. All right, we're going to talk a little bit about the law and a whole lot more, so stay with us. This is Simply the Law with Gary C. Johnson right after this. I'm Gary C. Johnson. I developed a method of representing my clients called Judo Law. Using Judo Law, our team set the record for the largest personal injury verdict in the state of Kentucky. No other law firm has even come close. We've had several multi-million dollar verdicts since then. And guess what? Now, most of our cases settle. If you've been hurt and you need money fast, give us a call, Pound Hurt. Welcome back into Simply the Law. You know, I did this program with you for years and years on the radio and television. And you were talking about, for heaven's sakes, don't get into a lawsuit if you don't have to. Until I had a very close friend that was horribly injured and had to have your help in the lawsuit. 
Gary, I had no idea the damage that being in a lawsuit did to the mental stability of an individual who was injured. But I watched this friend go through it. I watched how he would get anxious, how he worried, how bills piled up. Uh, he lost hope at times. It was over a year and a half period. Things worked out really well. You did a great job and helped him. But still the suffering that he did for a year and a half mm -hmm. of having to be in that lawsuit was painful. When I teach across the country to lawyers, <clears throat> I tell them that one of the things that they need to try to get the legislature or whoever to agree that <clears throat> the lawsuit itself for a person that is forced to file it is a damage. It, is, it has its own psychological damages that come with it. There are studies that say that if a person is involved in a lawsuit in litigation and they've been injured, that they don't heal as fast as people that are not in litigation. Now the defense doctors and the defense lawyers will say, see, they're just complaining they're still hurt when they're not because they want money. It's not true. When they're in a lawsuit, they can't sleep at night. <clears throat> if you can't sleep, you can't mend. The stress, stress will kill you. The stress of being in a lawsuit and the uncertainty of it weighs on their minds more than anything. It's amazing. I tell our, my clients when they first come to my office the first time, because I don't want them going crazy and ending up with severe mental disorders because they had to file a lawsuit. Good people don't want to be in a lawsuit. So I say to them, this table represents your life. Everything in it. Over here in this corner, a little bitty corner of this table, we're going to give that to this lawsuit and you're going to leave me in charge of that. I don't want you thinking about it. I don't want you wondering about it. I don't want you saying, what if? Here's our cell phones. Give us a call if you've got a question. Do not let this lawsuit destroy your life because it can. I've seen it happen. I've seen people with injuries that should have gotten better from a whiplash over time turned into fibromyalgia. I've seen it turned into complex regional pain syndrome. I've seen it happen simply because they were forced by an insurance company to file a lawsuit. Okay, so let me ask you a question. The example I gave as uh, my friend, what happened? Here's what really upsets me. This case was cut and dry. There was no question to it. A lady ran off the road, ran in the ditch, came across the yellow line and hit him head on. That no, was drunk. At, at no fault of his own. Mm -hmm. So here is a case that has no questions to it but you had to fight the insurance company for a year and a half in order to get the damages. Mm -hmm. and, and that suffering happened to somebody, that case could have been settled in 30 days. He should never have had to hire a lawyer. But that's not the way it works. But anyhow, let's take our second break and then we'll come right back. Yeah, no wonder you're asking that there should be damages because there should have been extra damages and money paid out because of that. Still upsets me to think about it. Stay with us. We'll be back with Gary C. Johnson and Simply the Law right after this break. Eastern Kentucky, Southern West Virginia, and Southwest Virginia. It can be a tough territory to reach when it comes to marketing. We can help. We can also help you find your identification. And we have plenty of services to do it and a lot of experience behind us over 37 years. In fact, we've either booked or sold nearly $70 million in advertising in this region. You need a new voice, a new idea, a new concept? Caseful Marketing. We're ready to go to work for you today. Our motto is nothing happens until you make it happen. So let's get started today. Welcome back into Simply the Law. And I'm, you know, I got a little upset over that I was at the end I was talking, but I'm sure we've got friends that are watching this 
that have said, I've got a relative that's been through that, I saw what happened, I saw how they drug things out. And, and what you're talking about, about changing the law would be, okay, after this year and a half that you could step up and say, I told you at the beginning, the facts that my client was injured at no fault of his own, you drug it out for a year and a half, you did all this extra damage to them, you ought to have to pay extra for what you did for dragging it out. Well, that's a fact, but it's not the law. <laughs> but I preach across the country when I'm doing teaching other lawyers. We need to look into that and try to make it that. Let's go back to the computer. I'll talk to you a little bit more. Now, when you talk about a lawsuit, how degrading it is and humiliating for a person that ends up having to file a lawsuit. And you don't have a bunch of frivolous lawsuits out there, folks. Lawyers, if, lawyers that file ba frivolous lawsuits are out of business. They're broke. <laughs> the first thing you have to do is you have to fill out a bunch of information if you're going to be filing a lawsuit. And let me give you some idea how extensive that information is that you have to provide that you probably don't want to provide. Number one, personal, all your personal identification information. Your lawyer has to have that. Number two, all of your education. Number three, do you have any military experience? I got to ask you, what's that got to do with the fact that somebody ran across the yellow line and hit your head on? Because it may become relevant. Wow. And Gary, and a lawyer has to have that information. L let me touch on something else. You started off reading from the Proverbs, and you, you did the W.C. Fields quote, which was, I've been looking for a loophole, there is none. You're forced to file a lawsuit. We're in the Bible Belt. One of the things in the Bible that it talks about is do not bring a lawsuit against your brother. We have a lot of people that are saying, because of my religious beliefs, I don't want to file that lawsuit because I have to file it against the person in the car, not the insurance company. What kind of problem does this cause? Good, decent people despise being in a lawsuit. One of the most embarrassing things that good, decent people face is having to call my law office and having to come and see us. It's very embarrassing to them. I ask them, <laughs> I say, did you want to come here? I said, no, I didn't want to come here. What do you mean? I didn't want to come in here with one of these lawyers. <laughs> of course they didn't want to be there. <clears throat> but if you're forced to file a lawsuit because an insurance company won't pay, then you have to do it. At least you'll get some sympathy <laughs> when you call us because we know what people go through. I've been at it too long. Way too long. I've seen too much. It's, uh, you actually said on this program several times, you said with all of these television commercials for the insurance companies, if one of them will do the right thing and pay out the claims that should be paid, it would put you out of business. Well, it's even worse than that. <clears throat> they want to insinuate that it's going to affect people's premiums and things if people recover and that they may not have insurance, be able to get insurance. Well, look at the commercials. Good hands, good neighbor. Every time you turn it on, they got some... Uh, little lizard. Little lizards up there <laughs> or something trying to get the business. The insurance companies are doing fine. Okay, back to the computer. Your entire work history, your attorney has to know that. Your entire medical history, and that is so hard to remember. We have to go through, once we get some medical records, we have to go through them to see if we find other providers that maybe our clients missed and didn't remember. Any prior accidents or injuries ever from the time you were a child? Ever been in any claims, workers' comp claims or lawsuits, suit or been otherwise? Please. We always run a, a thing to find out from CourtNet what's the history of our clients. Then everything about the accident that you can possibly remember, we have to have that information. Witnesses. Activities, what are the daily activities? Then what are your damages? Tell us about your pain. Keep a diary. 
your habits, your family, who are they? Good heavens. Your emotional life, what's happened to you? Social activities, recreational activities, your spouse, what's your spouse do? Who are your parents and your children? Gary, this is even that? Everything. This is starting to become... Hunting and fishing questionnaire. <laughs> this is starting to become painfully clear to me that basically you're going to have to know everything about your client from day one of birth to everything they do because you're preparing yourself for what the defense is going to do. They're going to try to find something to use against them to make them not credible, to turn them into a liar, or say they're trying to do a frivolous lawsuit. And if we don't do this, then we're not doing our job. And it's a shame that people have to be put through this when they had no fault at all in causing their damages. But it's the way the system works. But anyhow, I'm tired of that stuff, aren't you guys? That's pretty boring, huh? But it, it's an eye-opener. Huh? I mean, it's an eye-opener. For any of us who have never been in a lawsuit, when you start coming out with that paperwork, we would look across the table at you and say, what does this have to do with it? <laughs> but you already know what it has to do with That's it because right. when you get into mm -hmm. the courtroom, they're going to come after you. They're going to attack you. If we got another break? We do. Let's take it, then I'm going to come back and change the subject. I'll change the subject, I promise. It's all right. The information is kind of startling because you would never think that you would be answering all those questions when somebody hit you with their car and caused damages. You see what you're up against now. Stay with us. Gary C. Johnson and Simply the Law coming right back after this. People are asking, what is judo law? Judo is a martial art that uses the opponent's strength to defeat them by not opposing it directly. Gary C. Johnson created a method of practicing law based upon that principle. It worked so well, he named it Judo Law. To see the results, go to GaryCJohnson.com. To have Gary and his team of Judo lawyers go to work for you, dial pound hurt. This is an advertisement. Welcome back into Simply the Law. I know we're going to go on to another subject, but now I know why you say no one ever wants to be in a lawsuit, because you basically are becoming unclothed and revealing yourself, your innermost secrets, your personal life, everything, over an accident where somebody, not an accident, but somebody broke the rules and hit you and created some damages and mm -hmm. now it's like you're the one on trial. You are on trial. That's the tragedy of it. Okay, I told you I'd change the subject and I'm changing it. Found another book. 25 Ways to Win with People by John C. Maxwell. And I found something interesting in the book that I thought I'd share with you. Remember how many times I've talked to you about your value as a human being? that you're special, that you're one of a kind, and that each and every one of you has something special about you that 10,000 other people don't have. <clears throat> My friend Sandy Ramsey recommended that I, that I say to you that each and every one of you say to some, someone that you have something, spe point out to them something good about them or something special about them and then ask them to pass it on, okay? Now, you know what, that is a great, you, you always give us like a little chore to do for the week, but I want to commend Sandy for that because I'll guarantee you, we have people around us that we're in awe of an ability that they have and if you will go to them and tell them, they're probably going to look at you and say, oh, shucks, it's no big deal. I mean, but when you point it out and then ask them to do it to someone else, I think, it on. I think we're going to find uh, that this is going to be really good. Okay. Now, here's what he says. Recognize your value. On more than one occasion, I've told the story of being on a speaking platform with my friend Gary Smalley when he did something that captivated the crowd. <clears throat> 
Before an audience of nearly 10,000 people, Gary held out a crisp $50 bill and asked them, who would like this $50 bill? Hands going up, going up everywhere. I'm going to give this $50 bill, $50 to one of you, he said, <clears throat> but first let me do this. He proceeded to crumble up the bill, then he asked, who still wants it? The same hands went up in the air. Well, he continued, what if I do this? He dropped it on the floor and started to grind it into the floor with his shoe. He picked it up, all crumbled and dirty with filth on it. Now, who still wants it? Again, all of the hands went into the air. You have all learned a valuable lesson, Gary said. No matter what I do to the money, you still want it because it doesn't decrease in value. It is still worth $50. Gary's simple illustration underscores the profound point. Many times in our lives we are trapped, dropped, crumbled, ground into the dirt, into the dirt by the decisions we make or the circumstances that come our way. We may feel as though we are worthless, insignificant in our own eyes and in the eyes of others. But no matter what happened or what will happen, we never lose our value as human beings. Nothing can take that away. Never forget that. Wow. Isn't that what a what a great point. I mm -hmm. mean, <laughs> what an illustration. So all of us at times have been crumpled up, abused, mm -hmm. stepped on, all of that, but the value remains the same. This next little section is accept your value. How many times have you heard people say, he has issues? What they mean is that the person is stuck. The person is not healthy. He's got a hang up. He's uncomfortable in his own skin. It's what we psychologists are getting at when we talk about self-acceptance. <clears throat> Let's face it, all of us walking around on this planet have our insecurities and issues that we wish we could change about ourselves. But certain things we can't. Some things about us just are. But certain things, maybe you weren't born with the kind of looks you would like, or you aren't as tall as you want. Your genes dealt you a hand that you'll eventually got to accept, either that or you reject your personal value and spend your days trying to compensate for your insecurities. You become hum hung up, stuck, of not being dealt a better hand. The term acceptance comes from the Latin ad capir, that means to take to oneself. In other words, inherent in the process of accepting others is the, accept the act of self-acceptance. I'll say it again. You will never win with people until you become a winner and you accept yourself. What a great, what a great point. You know, you pointed out on a couple of programs back when you looked straight into the camera at our friends and you said, it's okay to be you. Yeah. It's good to be you. Be happy that you're who you are. Embrace it. You're fine. You're good. It's all right. And you know, that was, it was a revelation because the book is now telling us until we accept who we are and until we're happy with who we are, we're not going to be happy with other people. That's right. I'm going to read you one last thing and I hope I have time about your value because I think this is important. Perhaps you already recognize and accept your value. Maybe you know at the center of your being, deep in your soul, that you are loved by God and are of inestimable value. Congratulations. The next step is to increase your value to others by solving as many of your problems <clears throat> as you can. In other words, you need to maximize who you are by overcoming or fixing those things that are within your, in your power to change. You may struggle with a higher trigger temper, for example. You may have difficulty setting boundaries or taking responsibility. Maybe you have some bad habits, or perhaps your attitude needs an overhaul. All of us have hurdles we can overcome. 45% of Americans report that they would change a bad habit if they could. The truth is, they can change. <laughs> Each of us can improve ourselves whenever we, whenever we decide to. In his book, Teaching the Elephant to Dance, James Blasco describes how trainers shackle young elephants with heavy chains to deeply embedded stakes. In that way, the elephants learn to stay in its place. Older, more powerful elephants that may have been trained in this way never try to leave, 
even though they have the strength to pull up the stake and walk away. Their conditioning limits their movements. Eventually, with only a small, unattached metal bracelet on their legs, they stand in place, even though the stakes are actually gone. It's a story you've probably heard before, but like the powerful elephants, many people are bound by the restraints of previous conditioning. Just as the unattached chain around the elephant's legs keep it from moving, some people impose needless limits on their personal progress. Don't let this happen to you. Don't mindlessly accept restraints on your abilities. Challenge them and keep growing. You know, uh, I, you and I talked about this the other day. I listened to this world-famous comedian who is my age now, 56, and he was talking about being bullied in grade school and how he couldn't get over it, the restraint of what he was going through until he got into therapy. And he said, in therapy, I realized the old cartoon, the Bugs Bunny cartoon, the way that he really made Elmer Fudd mad was not to hit him or hurt him, but was to run up and kiss him. Mm -hmm. And he said, through therapy, I realized through forgiveness of the kids in grade school that bullied me, I could get those chains and those shackles off of me and I could move forward. And that's basically what the book is talking about. You are one of a kind, you are special, you were chosen to be born, you're here, right? You have inestimable value in the eyes of the Lord, so why not man? Now, get rid of those restraints, don't be like the trained elephant. <laughs> That's tr you've been trained that you're not worthy, you've been trained and conditioned that you can't do things, don't do it. You can, and be happy, and smile, and get the negativity out of your life. This life is worth living, my friends. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. No matter what you're doing, have fun. Period. Do it. My friend, I'm so glad that you're here for us and to all of our friends. If you ever need help, when you got somebody that knows your true value and he's telling you right here on this program, you know that's the person that's going to fight for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking this time to tune in to Simply the Law. On behalf of Gary C. Johnson, I'm Keith Casebold. As always, Gary and I look so forward to seeing you again, this time next week. Thank you for watching Simply the Law, a program created by Gary C. Johnson. Until next week, may you be safe, blessed, and happy. People are asking, what is Judo Law? Judo is a martial art that uses the opponent's strength to defeat them by not opposing it directly. Gary C. Johnson created a method of practicing law based upon that principle. It worked so well, he named it Judo Law. To see the results, go to GaryCJohnson.com. To have Gary and his team of Judo lawyers go to work for you, dial pound hurt. This is an advertisement.